Welcome back, guys. Hopefully the uh, the stream is back. Um, I'm I don't know what happened there. My uh, my internet on my PC completely bottomed out for no real reason. Uh, hang fire a second guys are we back is uh did anybody back? Yeah, Aria, my uh, my internet died completely on the PC. Uh, it's a good job that my phone is what I use to check the chat, because it wasn't until Ryan said something that I even looked, and I would have gone for God only knows how long before I'd have gone. Chat's a bit quiet. Might try alt tabbing. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. The internet just disappeared, and then I troubleshot, and it immediately came back, which is annoying. But that happens sometimes in our house. So yes, apologies to anybody who's watching the vod as well. Uh, this will probably be part two of day two. Um, I'm gonna read this again. I don't know if any of you guys saw it on uh, the the original vod. I don't know what point the internet dropped, but we'll read this again. You find a kid wearing a rather opulent chain around his neck. It's so heavy that his head is bent forward, but that minor struggle doesn't seem to wipe the mile-wide grin off his face. Adomar pushes the kid down and takes the necklace. Where did you get this? The kid cries out trying to grab his treasure back, but he's about three feet and a good jump too short. Hey, that's mine! Give it back! Another kid comes over flashing a ring so large it's pinching two fingers at once. Alright, that's enough. The company fans out and eventually find a dead merchant in some tall grass beside a tree line. His face is purpled and jagged with broken bones. It appears he has been stoned to death. A group of about 40 or 50 youngsters appear from the tree line, each juggling a stone in hand. Their leader, a little runt with red hair and sleeves of tattoos, asks what you want. You tell him that you'll be taking the merchant's goods. The leader laughs. Oi, is that so? I'll give you ten seconds to rethink that choice. Oi, I will, mister. So, uh, as I was saying when I realised the stream was gone, I don't think it's going to put us into an encounter with 50 youngsters. I could be dead wrong, but I don't think it will. But... It definitely could go wrong if we choose to try and take the goods off these kids. So what do we think, guys? Do we want to try and take them or do we want to back away? Take the goods, says Imatech. Do we really need some dead bloke stuff? Let the wildlings have it. It's a no from Ryan and a yes from Imatech. Somebody's going to have to break the deadlock. They are kids, but I say play it safe and leave them be. Ari are going to break the deadlock and we're going to back away. Um... Drive off the brigands who are down there. That's going to be a bitch to get to. Oh shit. Oh, bollocks. We got intercepted by some brigands. Shouldn't have been moving at speed too. Alright, um, the 
frontline lads are going to hold and the back line are going to back up to the top of this hill well not quite the top but oh they've got a lot of pretty decent armor they've even got a crossbow excellent oh this could go horribly Alright, we're going to backpedal to try and get to uh, where the ranged guys are on higher ground. Because it gives them more range and a better hit chance. Apparently not amazingly better, but... Gunnar, going to try and get a stone down range. Doesn't do very much with it. Erling and Monterey Jack are going to wait. Uh, Norman could do with having that battle whip closer to the front line, to be honest. Because he's only going to be able to reach the rank just in front. Although that's still pretty good. Maybe we'll hold. 21, 31, 21. Adelmar. Putting stones down range, manages to deck that guy once. Gebhard's gonna hold. Shit me, he got up there. Gunnar. Quite a few of these guys have got uh, shields, which is gonna make his job harder. <coughs> Does manage to hit the Brigand Thug, though. Burkhard hits the shield. Erling with the flail. Gets a big hit, fractures the uh, Thug's hand. Mike Hawk back into shield wall, or spear wall, rather. Monterey Jack. Couple of big swings with the orc blade gets that guy down. That guy has a pike, which is going to be a problem for uh, Monterey Jack. Norman actually can't hit that guy, really. It's the height difference a problem then. Let's head him over there. Horik is going to rush down to protect. Monterey Jack, I think. Oh, big hit there. Cutting the leg muscles of that brigand. Oh, crossbow bolt straight into uh, Burkhard. Thirty-six percent. Oh, severe concussion and dazed. What a fucking hit from Adelmar. Burkhard doing that guy in with the standard there. Erling with the flail. Misses. Horik. Getting a big hit in there that grazes that guy's neck and badly wounds him. Scaramasax against Erling. Oh no, Horik. Alas, poor Horik, we hardly knew ye. Gets completely fucked up by the pike carrier. Nope, no hits there. 
he still can't hit that guy. He can now. And he misses Norman. Gebhard gets a, a hit on the Brigand Thug with the Scaramus Axe. And a second one puts him down. Monterey Jack. He's got a lot of armor, in the guy in front of you. We're going to go to try and decapitate. It didn't work. I think we're going to push Mike Hawk forward here and get him involved. He gets a stab in that does the uh, guy's headscarf in. Norman with the whip. Manages to get a kill. Adelmar with the staff sling. He gets one hit in against the Brigand Raider down there. Erling misses with the two-handed flail. He is bleeding. And Gebhard has a pierced cheek. He's not looking too shabby, to be perfectly honest. So I think we're just going to keep him there. I'm not going to pursue these two that are flanking around because... Gepard's not in great shape. So we're just going to leave him where he is, I think. Yeah, that guy's going up to the back. Gunnar misses twice. Burkhard manages to get in there and pierces the guy's side. Mike Hawk gets one hit in against the Brigand Raider. Monterey Jack decapitates him with the Orc Blade. But that's as much movement as he's going to be able to get done. That geezer with the crossbow is going to be a bit of an issue. Burkhard in danger now. Erling running up, unable to get a hit in, in this turn. Norman not able to get the whip on target either. Adelmar switching to fists and getting a big punch in there. I think Gebhard's going to start going for that guy with the crossbow. Burkhard in the meantime. Oh, kills in one blow the uh, the brigand that was coming at him. Frees up Gunnar to get a couple more stones off. One of them strikes home, but it doesn't do very much. Mike Hawk pushes back up. And... Monterey Jack trying to make his way back up the hill as well. Crossbow guy's legging it. Adomar back to the staff. Stone hits the shield. Gebhard's going to withdraw. I don't want him pursuing the crossbow man on his own. Erling moves up. And then takes two big hits from the flail. Norman manages to disarm with the whip. Fails with the second hit. Burkhard misses as well. Mike Hawk. Two big hits in there. Gunnar still hitting the shield. Monterey Jack arrives at the fight. Adelmar. Two misses. Erling, big swing and a big miss. Gebhard closing in. Burkhard hitting the shield. Giza throwing a punch. He's got his weapon back. Norman fails to disarm with the whip. I'm going to switch Monterey Jack over to the hatchet and try and get the shield out of the way. Mike Hawk getting another hit in there, but he's getting too tired to get two hits in in one turn. 
Gunnar misses with his stone. Erling with a massive hit. Brigand Raider now has a fractured hand. Adomar hits the shield twice. Gebhard coming up. Uh, and decapitates him with the Scaramus Axe. This guy's dug in like a tick on a dog's back. He was, uh, he was standing pretty firm there, wasn't he? Mike Hawk going to move back down to the front. Monterey Jack as well. Norman down to the second rank. And we'll let that crossbowman go because he's probably miles away anyway. So Horik was actually downed in the battle, but apparently he has survived, although he is now traumatized. Loot-wise, we've gained some good armor and a, f a proper flail, a falchion, a pike, another Scaramus axe and another spear, plus a shield. So that's actually a really good haul. 126 crowns as well. That I'm very happy with. Right. Loot dishing time, I think. <clears throat> um... Right, first things first, what's the best armor we've now got? 90. Who's been here the longest? Erling and Gebhard, but Gebhard has two more kills, so that's going to push him to the top. He is going to switch to a patched male shirt. Uh, we're also going to give him a proper shield, rather than the buckler that he's using. And that's probably it for him. Um, Erling gets second dibs. He's currently got something that's worth 88 protection. So he doesn't want any of the... Oh, no, he does. There's a 95 there. Actually, then Gebhard's taking the 95 and Erling is taking the patched mail shirt. Lovely. Uh, Erling's using a two-handed flail, which we don't have an upgrade for. He's also using a knife. We haven't got any more daggers, but he's using a wooden flail. Yeah, we're gave, definitely giving him a proper metallic ball and chain flail now. Um, brings us on to uh, Monterey Jack the Ripper. Ryan, is there any equipment changes you'd like to make? Um... Technically speaking, the full leather cap gives you an extra five head protection. I don't think any of the armor is better than what you're already wearing. There's no improved shield. Doesn't look like there's a better axe straight up. And in terms of actual cleaver swords, you, there's not a better one. And there's not a better dagger, so... I'll grab the cap. Excellent. Monterey Jack the Ripper with a full leather cap now. And uh, our geezers at the back. Yeah. What should we say? He took part in one battle, one, one battle, one kill. Three battles, four kills. You know what? He may well be a slave, but Burkhard has been with the company for six days. He's took part in three fights and has four kills, including an Orc Young. So I think we're kind of going to promote him. He's no longer going to be carrying the standard, and we are going to permit him to... Uh, maybe not cultist's leather robes, because he's not a cultist. But we're actually going to give him... Wait a minute. No, it's not better. Oh, is Mike back? Um, is the Sykes better than the Cleaver? What Sykes? Oh, the Scaramus Axe. Uh, no. The, uh, the Head Chopper is definitely stronger than the Scaramus Axe. Okay. 
do we know if Mike's back after the uh, stream crash? Don't think he is. Okay. Um, I kind of want Mike to have dibs on the padded leather because it's better than his rugged circle. But I think Burkhard at very least has earned himself a rugged circle and we'll give him the open leather cap. Um, you know what? He can continue carrying the standard as well. I was going to pass it off to somebody else, but why not? We'll let him carry it. He's got a plus five on his initiative, a plus four on his hit points, and then we will take the the plus three on his maximum fatigue. He's got crippling strikes because he's oh he's the drunk miner, isn't he? So we'll give him executioner. Um. Okay, do. Um, it's going to take us a little bit of time to uh, heal these wounds up and repair our kit. We're going to head down to Sandhaven rather than go straight to that place and see if I can't grab a few more recruits. It's night time, so we can't. Because I believe Ryan may be correct on that. We'll camp until dawn. There's a couple of people in here. Um, we're not going to take Sigmar because he's expensive as shit, but we will hire both Rollo and Hilderic. <clears throat> Again, I will say these guys are not cultists, so when we come to sacrifice somebody, if they don't convert, chances are they're going to leave the company. But Imotec and Arya, feel free to sponsor them if you want. Uh, Hilderic is a brawler. Growing up, Hilderic wrestled bulls on the family farm. Unfortunately for men, he found time to venture into the cities. Fiery in spirit, he's always willing to take up fisticuffs. Local fighting rings say he's got a mean left hook. Very low on crowns and barely able to open his broken hands to hug his own son, much less throw a punch. Hilderic seeks a new career. Arya's going to take Hilderic. What do you want to call him, Arya? Storm blessed. Okay, uh, that sounds more like a title, so we can call him Hilderic Storm blessed if you want. You're going to take the other one, Imatech. Cool. That works. Excellent. Um. For the time being, you will just be wearing a tattered sackcloth. Um, we'll figure out what we're going to do with you in a second. Uh, Imotec, you're taking the other guy. And uh, are you calling him King Harlaus the Butterlord? Is that what you're doing? He is apparently a team player. He's a eunuch. Once a monk in training, it is said that Rollo bedded a woman of another faith. He was kicked out of the faith, and in an attempt to regain their sympathies, the man removed the offending equipment. It appears the faithful did not welcome him back. You found the man being bullied by kids when you found him. Seeing your sword, he politely asked to join your band of men where one's past or physical deformities do not matter. He is already used to life's struggles, perhaps in a way most men can't speak to. Oh no, not a eunuch, but I'm fine. Uh, are you wanting to be the eunuch, or are you now abandoning said eunuch? You are being the eunuch. Okay, so we are going with a eunuch called King Harless the Butter Lord. Okay, excellent. Um, 
Let's see what we're going to do about equipment here. We've got Burkhard in the back line with the standard. We've got Norman with the battle whip. Horik with his buckler and short sword. Um, I want one of these guys at the back to have a pike because that just makes sense. Apparently Hilderic is dumb, Arya. But we're going to give Hilderic a pike. Uh, and King Harless the Butterlord is going to be given a buckler and a... Uh, no, he's not going to be given a falchion, actually. He's going to be given this extra spear that we've got. And his job is just going to be to try and protect the back line on the right side. I wanted the pike, but I know you choose the weapons. I choose the weapons for the slaves. Once you're a, a cultist, and in other playthroughs any time, uh, you, you will choose your own equipment. But I think for the people we're hiring solely to be sacrifices, it makes more sense that, that the company chooses what they have. Because it's more like, here, you're only here to die. Have a pike. Um, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do that. I do think King Harless is going to need a bit of head protection, though, because he is on that uh, flank and likely to get hit. Uh, Norman, with his whip, is probably going to fall back as soon as we get into a fight, and uh, Horik will close in, so he doesn't need it. So, what's the pierced cheek on Gebhard going to do? It lowers his fatigue recovery. And there's a few people that have got light wounds which are going to lower their hit points. So, let's leave. And take a hike up to the objective. Uh, yeah, no, you don't get the pike back if they leave, for sure. Like, we would have to try and... Basically... When everyone gets upset, I'll take everything off them. Uh, and hopefully we'll keep it that way. As for the sacrifice, I don't know. Maybe we do get them back. Because it would be a bit unfair if we didn't. But I guess we'll see. Some brigand ra raiders. Um, one day. One day. Oh, he's got pierced legs muscle muscles. Which lowers his melee defense. Two days, and he's traumatized. All right, we're going to make camp for at least a day to try and get some recoveries. Sacrifices or converts, exactly, Ryan, yeah. If they convert, then they become a fully-fledged member of the cult, and then they can start choosing what weapons they want. But before then, they're only here to die, so <laughs> there's not much point in them getting to choose how they're going to do that. Alright, looks like everybody who's going to level up, or going to recover, has recovered. It's just these two with their injuries now. So, let's attack, because we don't really have an option. Brigand Raiders could be pretty tough. There's four of them. Which is good for us. We're going to have to let them come to us. I'm going to try go for a disarm with Norman's whip, and he succeeds, and he even manages to get a whip in as well. Mike Hawk, we're going to drop into Spear Wall to uh, repel some attackers. Erling is going to wait. Everything, I think everybody's pretty much waiting, to be honest. Adelmar! He's going to go for that brigand and miss. 
Gunnar is going to go for this one. And also miss. One of them stepped up and is reposting. Oh, hello. They're all stepping up and reposting. Hilderic, though, at the back, gets a stab in because he cannot be reposted against. Uh, King Harless on the right flank is going to drop into Spear Wall to try and uh, defend that right flank, as is his job. Gebhard is going to go for the Decapitate on this raider because he doesn't have any head protection. He gets a hit in. Spear Wall going to work there for Mike Hawk. Erling coming in. Big swing and a big miss. Adelmar. Gets a stone hit in on the Brigand Raider. Horik rushes the flank. Uh, that guy's doing repost, so Horik's going to do repost as well. And then Norman is going to attempt to disarm and fail. Attempt to whip and hit the shield. Gunnar with two misses on the stones. Mike Hawk back into shield wall. Or spear wall, rather. Monterey Jack is going to go shield wall for the defense and wait because that guy's in repost. Burkhard, though, doesn't care about repost and in annihilates him. All right. Hilderic we're going to hold off on. He's going to push forward. King Harless gets one in and then gets a big hit which has broken his ribs. Adelmar getting one hit in and then the other deflected by the buckler. King Harless is in trouble but he gets a stab in. Uh, Erling going to rush to the right flank. And apparently get stabbed for his troubles. Gunnar misses again with the stones. That's very good from Horik getting the repost hit there. Uh, he's got repost, so I don't really want to hit him, to be honest. So Gebhard is going to shield wall and wait. The objective marker looks like a big cheese wheel. Don't know what you're talking about. Um, Horik is going at the Brigand Raider and actually we're going to skip him on his next turn. Monterey Jack's going to come forward and in one swoop with the Orc Blade decapitate the Brigand Raider. Burkhard is going to move around to the right. Mike Hawk is going to step through into the gap and shield wall. Norman's going to move down. Hilderick is going to take up position behind uh, Erling. That's the one. And then Horik is going to follow Monterey Jack. Hilderick's turn hits the buckler of the Brigand Raider. Erling gets hit by the riposte that I forgot that guy had. King Harless blocks one shot with the buckler and then gets decked and is probably dead, if we're being honest. Adelmar gets two hits on, on the Brigand Raider. Burkhard is going to hold position. Gunnar manages to get one hit on the Brigand Raider down there. He's still reposting, so we're still shield warding, walling with Gebhard. He's reposting again. Norman's disarmed him though, which is going to mean he's not reposting anymore. Fails to get a whip in on the Ginger Brigand. Horik rushes forward. Monterey Jack 
rushes forward. This guy is now trying to flee. Uh, Mike Hawk. Going to get two stabs in on the Brigand Raider down here. Burkhard's going to make a move and gets the kill in. We are going to run this last dude down. And Hilderic's just going to finish him. Unfortunately, Imatek, King Harlus the Butterlord, has paid the ultimate price and fallen in his first battle. However, a kill for Monterey Jack, two kills for Burkhard, and a kill for Hilderic Stormblessed. Poor Imatek. Yeah, you can have another one next time we recruit somebody. We did get some nice armor. And we've gained a boar spear, which is really nice. We've also gained a signet ring, which I think is possibly the thing that we're looking for. Uh, and an extra shield. 103 crowns as well. So time for divvying up the bootay. Uh, in terms of armor, we have got an additional leather lamellar. We've also got a worn male shirt, which is worth 110. Eight kills and six kills. So the 110 male shirt is going to Gebhard. Erling is going to be switching to leather lamellar armor. Which means, Ryan, you have the option of upgrading to a patched male shirt. In fact, you have the option of upgrading to Leather Lamellar Armor, which is an increase of 7 overall. I'll go for the Leather Lamellar. Good choice. Um, I don't think Mike is back, but uh, hopefully he will return at some point and can claim himself some better armor. Uh, Weapon-wise, Ryan, I don't see any improvements over the weapons that you've been using. Um, no, there's none for Gebhard either. There is a boar spear that Mike could use, but uh, again, he's not here. And I, although no, that's a straight upgrade, so we're going to upgrade him to uh, a boar spear. What do you think, guys? Like, because I definitely won't change anyone's equipment in terms of if you have a spear, I'm not going to give you a pickaxe, right? But, like, when it comes to armor, because with weapons, if it's a straight upgrade, I'm doing it when you're not here. But would you guys be bothered if I said, like, oh, there's better armor available, so I'll just put that on your guy? suppose you can always take it off when you get back if you don't like it uh, Norman the uh, the refugee has actually leveled up plus five to initiative plus four to health and a plus four to fatigue he's a team player he's hesitant So we will give him. I'm gonna give him fast adaptation, because just because he's hesitant doesn't mean he can't actually adapt quickly. It just means he doesn't start off quickly, right? I think if they're not around, you should upgrade armor and shields for the sake of their characters being more survivable. I think that's fair, Brian. So I'm gonna upgrade Mike to uh, a, the patched mail shirt. And since Burkhard has kind of earned his way out of wearing tattered stuff, I'm going to upgrade him to padded leather, I think. No, I'm not. Just in case he ends up disappearing with it. Um, if we upgrade too many of these guys, the choices we get might be between people that have got good kit and we don't know if we lose it. That'll do for the time being, I think. So we shall head back to Neuenreed. to claim our 660 crowns.
Excellent. Uh, we definitely need to buy some more food. And we'll mix it up a bit and get some dried fruits. In terms of recruits, still no cultists. But we are starting to get a fair whack of money, to be honest. The cheapest lads here are the 130s. So we've got uh, Imotech. You might want to pay attention because you might want to sponsor one of these guys. We've got Hakon the Daytailer. Working here and there, Hakon is known as a Daytailer. Someone to task or someone to ask whenever an extra hand is needed. Hakon lost his loved one to sickness as befalls so many these days and broke down. After weeks blurred by drinking his sorrows away, a travelling mercenary company seemed a good opportunity to clear his head. We've got Erwin the Miller. Although just a simple miller, Erwin always dreamed about wandering out into the world and bring home tails and pockets full of crowns. One night he was awoken by a loud thunderstorm. Rushing outside, Erwin realised that his mill had been ignited by a lightning strike. Whether by lack of alternatives or by his free will, Erwin stands before you now, ready to swear fealty. And then the last one, Ulrich, who is also a miller, and that's actually his title. Uh, being a simple fellow, Ulrich did not mind working hard in the mill every day. After hearing wild tales from a hedge knight in the tavern of Neuenried, his imagination was running wild with all the possibilities out there in the world awaiting for him. Whether by lack of alternatives or by his free will, Ulrich stands here before you now, ready to swear fealty. I'm going to be hiring all three of the Mimitex, so it just depends which one you want, mate. Because they're all the same price. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to look at selling some of the, like, sticks and stuff, Ryan. Hack on. Very well. We're going to hire all three, and then you can rename Hakon. What would you like to call Hakon? We've got Ulrich the Miller, Erwin, and Hakon, who does not get to keep his knife. King Harless the Butter Lord, too. <laughs> King Harlaus. The second, the Butter Lord. Do you want to do it that way, King Harless the second, or King Harless the Butter Lord two? Yeah, King Harless is from uh, Mountain Blade, Ryan. Go with what you're, the way you wanted to do it. Oh, it won't fit in there, so. I guess we'll do King Harless the second of the Butter Lord. Uh, right, uh, these chaps. Linen Tunic? I think not. You join the Cult of Cheese, you are immediately stripped and clothed in shit that you wouldn't want to be seen dead in. But that's not your decision. Uh, this guy's actually, Ulrich the Miller's got some pretty good melee uh, damage. So, I think we'll stick him. We'll give him a... Why not? We'll give him a proper shield. And a spear, and he can protect the left flank. Erwin can have a buckler and a spear and protect the right flank, and actually that's as many as we can deploy. Which means that King Harless II is going to remain in reserve for the time being. We've got a lot of wooden sticks that we probably aren't going to use at this point. That signet ring actually looks like it's... Uh, it's just loot. Mm, that's not good prices though, so we're not going to sell that here. We will sell the wooden sticks, because I don't think we're at the point where they are worth anything to us. Ordinarily, I'd have started selling off tattered sackcloth and stuff, but... I like keeping that for the... The newbies. 
However, I think we are going to sell off the uh, the normal clothes. Because we've got better armor kicking around. We'll keep the rest of it. Can I request Erwin be renamed? Erwin Rommel. Uh, no, we're just going to let him be Erwin. Why am I in camp? I'll just eat all the butter. Well, there you go then. So you can eat all the butter, I guess. Uh, who likes us? Dinkle's Mark is apparently allied with us. Interesting. Um... You know what? I'm going to head towards Weissenbach in the hope of finding some chuffing cultists. You're in camp because you can only field 12 people on uh, the battlefield, Imatech, and we have 13 in the company, so one of them's got to stay behind basically it's not been staying behind he's still with the company but I mean he can't fight because you can only have 12 we've arrived at Weissenbach and there is there are two cultists in here Winrich and Bernhard well we're definitely recruiting both of these and uh, yes uh, they have got the strange cultist backgrounds. Uh, yes, you can change sponsor Imatech. So, we're going to hire Bernhard. We're going to hire Winrich. So, we've got Winrich, who is bloodthirsty and has double grip. And we've got Bernhard, who has eagle eyes and double grip. That's fine, Arya, you can change too, but you and Imatech are going to have to decide which one you're taking, because they both have double grip, which is nice, but one of them has eagle eyes, which gives them better vision, and that's that one's stats. The other one has bloodthirsty, which means all kills are fatalities, if the weapon allows. Imatech's saying he wants Winrish. So, Arya, are you okay with having Bernhard? Yes. Right, in that case, what do you want to rename your two cultists, guys? And then we'll get to picking your equipment and stuff, because you're cultists, so you get to choose. I should say, I, I use guys as a general term. I should say ladies and gentlemen. But I'm not that refined. King Harless III, but a lord. I'm seeing a pattern here. King Harless III. Ooh, just fits. The butter lord. Excellent. And, uh, Arya? Kaladin. Nice. Kaladin, Kaladin. I don't know how it would be pronounced. And I think because Imotech should be a gentleman about it, that Arya should be allowed to pick her equipment first. And Arya, feel free, if you wish, to take equipment off of the slaves. You can't have stuff that other cultists have got, because it's their stuff. But these guys are just borrowing what we've given them, so feel free to take shit off them if you want it. So, you're probably going to want to keep the 
cultist's leather hood because it's the best thing we've got in terms of defense for the head. But you're definitely going to want to change that tattered sackcloth. We have got the cultist's leather robes, but we've also got... Oh no! We haven't got any armor better than that. The cultist's leather robes are the best armor you can get with us right now. Is farming spring barley fields in Lord of the Rings Online? That sounds wholesome. Cultist's leather robes. Done. And what weapons would you like? Is the pike two-handed? Uh, yes, I believe it is. Yeah, it is. But it's got a range of two tiles. I'll hover over it so you can see. It's got a range of two tiles, which means if you're behind the front line, you can still stab people that are in front of the front line. Which is why I typically have them in the back. It does, Imatech. I always think that too. I will take the pike and sit in the back. Okie do. Hilderic Stormblessed is going to lose his pike to Kaladin. Uh, you've also got two extra slots if you want to put anything in those. Can I have a sword as well, please? You can. Um, we have got a short sword, but we've also got two falchions, which are better versions of the short sword, basically. They do more damage and whatever else. You can have a sword and a knife if you want. The falchion. Very well. Falchion. Both to the knife as well. Excellent. Good choice. Right. Imatech. Oh, we need to... Where are you going to be? Do you want to be in reserve, Arya? Or do you want to bump one of these slaves back to reserve and take their spot? Might as well take the spot of the guy you just disarmed. Boom. Okie doke. Hilderic the... St oh, Hilderic Stormblessed. Dropping back into reserve. Imatech. I don't think you can get any... Yeah, no, there's no headgear that's better than the potato sack that you're wearing on your head. So, uh, armor, the best you're going to be able to do is cultist's leather robes. If you want those. Cultist robe armor. Cool. And what do you want for weapons? Uh, a big axe, a small axe, and a buckler. Okay, so you want the the woodcutter's axe, the hatchet, 
You know you can nick this shield off of Ulrich the Miller if you want, right? Because he's just a slave. I'll nick it then. Okie doke. Right, woodcutter's axe, uh, hatchet, and wooden shield. And uh, are you wanting to uh, be in reserve or are you wanting to take a spot in the line? He's one of the uninitiated. He hashtag sacrificial equality. Frontline bump Ulrich down. Okay, do. Frontline as in actually frontline. Um. Right, you know what, Ulrich? If you're not going to be in the front line, you don't get any of the extra equipment. Uh, we do now have a dagger free, um, which I am going to give to Erling because he's still using a knife and he's been here longer than anybody else. So is that where you want to be, Imatech, on the left side of the front line? Yes. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, Aladdin. Let me just. Uh, let me just add Aria here. go right that's them added to the list let's ride there is a level one mission here recover a relic what's to pay 80 crowns and another 310 pay us more okay I guess we'll do it then Adding me to what? Uh, to the uh, the member, the, the sponsor list. I have a Google Excel sheet that tracks like who everybody has in all of the different playthroughs that we've got going. You will, because I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> all right, we're going over here to recover something. Yeah, gear-wise, some people have still got some repairs going on, but uh, we're mostly there. Imatech's kit is repaired. To be honest, I think if Imatech's is repaired, everyone's is. Alright, in that case... Let's go get this thing. Oh shit. Finding and bagging the coat of Sir Istvan was easier than expected. Finding a group of undead men top heavy with rustic armor and wielding spears in a tighter military formation than even the highest paid army in the realm, not so expected. To arms! Excellent. We're fighting ancient auxiliaries. Six of them. Alright, um, I don't want Gebhard to have a height disadvantage when he's fighting, so we're going to move the line forward one pace. Across the 
could have moved him actually. Monterey Jack's gonna shield wall up. Fuck me, they move quickly. Oh my god. Well, we're in it now. He's got a lot of armor. We're gonna try... Switching to the bludgeon with Gebhard. Burkhard's going to step forth. And aim for that one down there. He hits the shield. Adomar pushes forward. Gets a stone into the shield. Uh, Gunnar has kind of been pushed out of position somehow. Not really sure how. But he's going to make an effort and fuck it up. Norman's going to move forward and we're going to try and disarm that auxiliary. He's going to hit the shield. Erwin is going to spear wall to try and protect uh, Gebhard's right flank. Erling. 56%, 56%. That one's got zero armor. Didn't do much. King Harless. Oh, that's not what we want to do. Oh, King Harless the third shatters one of the skelly blobs in the first hit of the battle. Horik gonna push up and hit the shield. Mike Hawk. Going to get a blow in against that auxiliary. And then Kaladin is going to strike the shield of that uh, auxiliary. Adomar gets a stone hit in and then misses. Gebhard absolutely shatters one and decks another. Gunnar misses with both of his stones. Norman hits the shield twice. Both of them have just shield walled up. Erling smashes one to pieces. Mike Hawk gets two hits in. King Harla strikes the shield of his opponent. Horik also strikes the shield twice. He then shield walls up and stabs Horik for a nasty blow that pierces his lung. Uh, Erwin, I think we are going to push forward. And he's going to go at that ancient auxiliary. Kaladin shatters another one. Monterey Jack going to let the dog off the leash and step forward. Dog rips one to shreds. Good lord, this is going pretty well. Adomar going to move up. Gebhard chasing the dog. Or chasing after the dog, I guess. King Harless gets a big hit in. Erwin making a run for it. Norman fails to disarm with the whip, but then he whips the head right off of the uh, skelly blob. Erling grabbing a kill, Gebhard grabbing a kill, Norman grabbing a kill, King Harless the third grabbing a kill, and Kaladin grabbing a kill. And we've gained some speed. 
spears and some ancient auxiliary shields, 125 crowns, and a falx. Gosta92, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the doghouse, buddy. Everybody say hello to Gosta. Oh boy, fetch yourself a bone. Uh, the auxiliary shields are pretty good. I can't remember how good. You take a look at the coat of Sir Istvan and at the men who attacked you over it. Or at least you think they attacked you over it. The enemy lieutenant seemed to have said something, but you can't remember what it was. Ah well, time to return to honor the councilman and get paid. Alright, let's take a look at the uh, limited loot that we got there. The ancient spears do 20 to 35 damage, which is definitely not better than the boar spear that Mike has, but it may be better than the militia spear. 25 to 30. Okay, so it's got a lower a lower end and it's a higher end. So it is kind of better. We're going to give Erwin an ancient spear either way. Uh, the auxiliary shields have 16 um, overall uh, protection and they do 15 and 15 whereas the normal shields are 24 overall and 15 and 15 so it's not better than one of them but I think yeah they are better than bucklers so you get an auxiliary shield and you get an auxiliary shield And that's all the loot dishing I think we even need to do. We didn't really gain a lot from that. Darn it, I keep laughing because you keep mispronouncing it. I mean, you know what? We're just going to call it cow. There you go. That way I don't continue to embarrass myself. We return to Weissenbach in glory. Excellent. Uh, we could probably buy a bit more food. We'll buy some grain. Medical supplies here are ridiculously cheap and we've got a lot of money so we're just going to stock up on them. There is no more missions here. But Dinkle's Mark is allied to us, so we'll probably get a good price for the Signet Ring at Dinkle's Mark. So we'll head up the road. And we are actually approaching the end of the stream, I think, guys. We're a little... we're almost there. Um, hello. Don't happen to have any cultists, do you? No, didn't think so. Yeah, we'll get a really good price for the signet ring here, so we'll sell the signet ring. Tools are expensive here. Oh, um, Gunnar has apparently leveled up. Took part in three battles. We'll give him a level up on health. I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. One of those delightful sneezes where you don't actually sneeze because you've said you're going to. Uh, plus four on fatigue. And we'll give him plus three on resolve because his resolve is garbage. Um, he is dexterous. Well, in that case, we'll give him fast adaptation because that makes sense. What's the Falx like, Ryan? It's a cleaver weapon, but it does 25 to 35 damage, which is a damn sight less than your head chopper. 
What is the hooked knife or sword thing? That's the fox. It's a cleaver sword. Or a cleaver. Uh, ba -ba 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 -da. Do you have a permanent injury? No. Well, you have got the traumatized thing, but... Monterey Jack the Ripper. Oh yeah, you are wearing better armor than than the cultist armor, that's why. Um Tavern Barber. You know what? Just at the end of the stream, um I'm only gonna allow barber stuff for subscribers just because it does take time and it's not time that needs to be spent. But since pretty much everybody in here is a subscriber anyway. Let's go through and decide how we want everybody to look. Gebhard doesn't like... I like how Erling looks. I'm not sure I'm a fan of how Gebhard looks. Uh, I'm going to change his hair. Mm. Yes, that. Ryan, do, does Monterey Jack look how you want him to look? I'm going to think that he might do because he looks like a fucking lunatic. I like him. Excellent. I don't think Mike's here. Uh, I don't care about the slaves. Um... Aria, does uh, does your chap, whose name I refuse to now pronounce, look how you want him to look, or can I look like King Harless? Yeah, I can try. Um, I need to change your hair colour. Oh, that was easy. In fact, that pretty much is King Harless, isn't it, Imitek? There you go. <laughs> Just dyed his hair ginger. Problem solved. Black hair and long. Black hair. Like long in a ponytail kind of long or like loose long. Don't know why that changed the colour. Fuck. Or you know, like Sean Bean long. How are we, uh, how are we doing the, the hair? Right there, that one. Loose, long and black. That looks loose, long and black, so... Excellent. Cool, right, well... Oh, hang on. Okay. You actually need to click accept, otherwise it doesn't change anything. Which probably means... Yeah, when I changed him, it didn't do anything. Cool. Righty ho ho. Not that it matters much with an executioner's hood. No, it doesn't. And it like typically um, the way the game works is if you don't wear any head protection, you are woefully exposed to being decapitated. So you're almost always going to have something on your head. But I just think every now and again it's it's something nice to uh, to do to know that you know how he looks under the hood. Um, or under the helmet, or under the leather cap, whatever it is he's wearing. Um, right. I think we're going to leave. Let's pause. And um, what I'm going to do, guys, is I think I probably will be back shortly. Like, maybe even within an hour with uh, with SRP stream. But um, 
for the time being I'm going to raid somewhere um, and send you guys off. Uh, no, I'm not going to raid Rebel King because there's uh, there's people I can raid that have got less viewers, and I like to lo to raid the people with uh, with the fewer viewers and get their their viewer count up. So we're actually going to raid Reigns Almighty, who currently only has Joe watching him. So if we all pile in there, that uh, that'll be nice and good for him. So make sure you make some noise when you get into David's stream. Uh, drop some oh my dogs make sure he knows that he's getting raided by me uh, give him some love if you like what you see and you don't already follow him please do click follow and uh, drop him a follow uh, I'll probably be back very very shortly with SRP um, or at the very least you know I'll be back at some point tonight and even if I'm not I'll probably be on with the SRP tomorrow night so I'll see you guys soon but for the time being it's gonna be as always, Wardog out. <laughs>